Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Get Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, whatever it may be in your neck of the woods. I'm making this video kind of early around 4 p.m. or so Eastern time. Dropping in a little bit early because my family is coming home a day early. I'm very excited. They're all, all the way in Augusta, Georgia right now. So they're about an hour away from my area here in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm very excited to see them. So I thought about not even making a video tonight, but since they're not here quite yet, I think it's important to make a video, and that's really because of what's going to happen in the short term. Late this evening into the overnight hours, there is a decent tornado threat across the Deep South. I'm talking about areas of maybe Louisiana, maybe extreme southeast uh, sections of Arkansas, maybe even extreme southern Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama. And I know that's not what you want to hear, but we got to let you you guys know what's going on because I think this could happen when people are asleep. We're going to watch a line of storms as a low-level jet is ramping up. The tornado threat can increase well after the sun goes down tonight. So we're going to talk about that, talk about what's kind of driving that because what's driving that is this upper-level low over this cutoff low we've talked about multiple times in the last couple of videos. This is going to promote a severe weather threat for tomorrow also across like Georgia, all the way up into South Carolina, the Panhandle, of Florida and then the flooding threat begins I'm not talking about some kind of catastrophic flooding as of yet so of course we can't predict the exact future but this cutoff low is gonna meander across the south keep temperatures really cool and keep it very stormy there's been a lot of people telling me they're vacationing this week and I don't have the best news for you I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer but I'm trying to be real with you folks and we're gonna discuss that then we're gonna give you an update on the tropics also and talk about what's going on out there we're going to have Brett. Good chance we are. But we'll talk about the latest information on that. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Appreciate any new subscribers. Their growth has, has been pretty good for June. Um, it's been a grind getting through this week. I've been exhausted making videos. The videos have been very long. And uh, there's been a lot to, to talk about. Uh, but you guys have... Have, have stuck with me every bit of the way you know there's been a lot of views on the videos for june standards uh so thank y'all so much and, and welcome to anybody that's new i know it's not the most flashy setup you know it's just my bedroom uh, but we keep it real here and we keep it very informative and we got a family type atmosphere so thank you all for the amazing support if you guys got anything that i can pray about or pray over as always please put it in the comments below so i can pray over it and so others can do so too. Let's get rolling. So we're going to obviously speak on tonight first. So we still got the enhanced risk. The same thing we discussed in, in last night. I'm sorry, this morning's video. This goes all the way through Monday morning. So it, it extends from what we call 12Z, uh, you know, the morning of 12Z, and then the next morning of 12Z. It's a 24-hour period. 12Z, just think of that as the morning. It's in Zulu time. It can be very confusing. We won't get into that right now. But we have an enhanced risk. So this is off. There, there's a lot of shower and storm activity that's in Alabama right now. This is trailing off. And then the atmosphere is starting to recover in Mississippi this afternoon and this evening. Um, this is going to be the, the tone setter for what's to come this evening. Enhanced risk will maintain. This is not because of what's going on right now. This is for mainly what's going to happen overnight tonight. Level three out of five enhanced risk. Can't ignore the slight risk all the way up here too. The tornado risk, this increased, and honestly, this slipped, this slipped past me. I didn't even realize it bumped from a 2 to 5% risk until about an hour ago. Well, we have a 5% risk now, from a, up from a 2% risk, to see a tornado within 25 miles of any given location. And this really isn't for right now. This is for what's going to happen later this evening into the overnight hours. Okay, this has increased. So this includes Jackson, up the Meridian, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, everybody in between, all the way to Tuscaloosa, almost all the way to Birmingham. OK, so there, there's going to there's a decent tornado threat tonight. And with this, the, the wind threat is going to be big, too. You know, in this red area, you got a 30 percent risk of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. There's been areas that's had 80 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts with some of these storms throughout the south central U.S. and deep south. It's been devastating for some people. People are without power. It's miserably hot. And it's just a, a literally a deadly combination for some people. So we're praying for you folks. I definitely said a prayer last night for you guys, and we'll continue to pray for you folks. Hopefully you get your power back soon. But unfortunately, I could see more people losing power tonight. But we got the 30% risk of, uh, of winds right here. And uh, the hail threat will be there tonight too. And uh, we not only do we have a 30% risk of hail exceeding one inch or larger, we have the hatch risk also. We have a 10% risk. 
in the black outline region of hell exceeding two inches of diameter or larger. So I'm watching for a line of storms tonight to get going, okay? And uh, it's going to produce all hazards, I think. All right, so this is what's going on right now, folks. It's the radar. Includes everybody you see, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, over to South Carolina, Arkansas, Northeast Tennessee, and Eastern Oklahoma. So you notice not a whole lot's going on right here, okay? Not nothing's going on. This is the energy that's moved out of Mississippi right here, and uh, it's trailing off across the panhandle of Florida, dipping down as far southeast as southwest Georgia. And really what we'll watch for is a Cape is building in this general direction into this area. Cape values are going to explode into the late evening hours. We'll build all the way into the late evening hours to the overnight hours. This is one of the thermodynamics you need. You got, you got plenty of moisture at the surface. Dew points well into the 60s and 70s. Cape values well over two to 3,000 joules per kilogram will build into this region. At the same time, and um, you don't see on your screen, but up here you got a low pressure all right and this is going to be the low pressure that is going to plague the southeast weather wise over the next four to five days and what's going to happen here is you got a low level jet that's going to get ramped up into this region i know it's a bunch of lines but basically you got winds increasing about a mile and some change up in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's going to produce what we call kinematics that is going to support a tornado threat, put a spin to the atmosphere, put some speed in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And in this line of storms that I'm expecting to maybe develop right into here, as it sweeps down here, you're going to have an embedded tornado threat. So not only is this going to occur at night, it's going to be embedded in a line of storms. So please take this serious. So let's continue to talk about this and figure out what can happen. Let me get this off the screen here. All right, so the HRRR model, the latest one, it's still running right now. How this, how can this unfold tonight? We'll explain this the best way we can. We'll start off. Remember, most of everybody that's going to be on the threat tonight is in central time. So you see this time right here, it says 7 p.m. Back this up one hour, and that's what we're at. So this is about two hours from now. This is initializing. And we'll go all the way out to, not, to, to 8 p.m. We got some pretty nasty storms beginning to develop in and around the Memphis area. Western Tennessee, Western Kentucky, the, even the Boot Hill, Missouri, and, set in north, uh, east Arkansas. They become their most intense as they're leaving this region, and then boom. It's like you got middle-of-the-afternoon kind of storms. We actually talked about this in last night's video, how, if you don't, if you remember, if you tune in, that, you know, the model guidance was liking the idea of these storms getting really bad later this evening. And sure enough, it's looking like that's going to happen. Um, but these storms really grow, okay? This is 9, 10 p.m., and you just got a just an unorganized, at this point, multi-segment kind of line of storms extending all the way from just west of Nashville, all the way through Mississippi, all the way to northern Louisiana. And you keep this going, and it begins to get its act together. At this point, it's around 11 p.m., and you got a pretty nasty line of storms beginning to get going here. And... It's very slow moving. It kind of tilts because the low pressure begins to move off to the east. It begins to tilt. And not only, you can get a lot of rain tonight too. We'll stop. This is around midnight. You have a pretty nasty line of storms going maybe as far north as through the middle part of Tennessee. Okay. All the way down into Mississippi, northern Alabama. This is an exact science. I say that often. But this is what the latest run of the h strip R model is saying where these storms are going to be. They continue to work through damaging wind threat, large hail threat, and embedded in some of these storms because you have an increasing low-level jet, you're going to have an increasing tornado threat. And then as we get to 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, watch out Atlanta. I think the tornado threat will decrease as you lose some energy in the atmosphere here. But, I mean, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, it could be you know a loud start to your morning in Atlanta eastern Alabama, and then we'll start the severe weather threat for tomorrow as we're waking up. So why is there a tornado threat tonight? Well, uh, there's a low pressure up here, okay? The atmosphere has stabilized. If we back it up all the way to earlier this afternoon, you don't have much cape, all right? And that's because this line of storms moved through, stabilized the atmosphere here, rain-cooled air, lower temperatures, but they moved through fast enough to where the atmosphere is able to recover and use up that little bit of daylight, that daytime heating, 
and then the atmosphere is recovering, and then you stop it here. This is late this afternoon, really early this evening, 7, 8, 9 p.m. You got Kate, mixed layer Kate values over 4,000 joules per kilogram in northern Louisiana, southern sections of Arkansas, okay? A lot of fuel in the atmosphere. Remember, once you get over 1,000 joules per kilogram in Cape, Cape being that storm fuel in the atmosphere here that really ignites these storms. The higher it goes, the more there's fuel in the atmosphere here. Now, there's other, there's other factors that will prevent a storm from getting going, even if there's Cape values over 6,000. Um, but in this case, th there, will, there won't be anything like that. So we're not going to discuss that. We have before... Uh, in earlier videos, but in this case, this won't be that that won't be a factor tonight. If you keep this going here, these Cape values rise and spike all the way up to Memphis and reach well over a thousand joules per kilogram. So basically, what I'm showing here here is is later this evening, you're going to have rocket fuel for thunderstorm development all the way into southern Arkansas, Louisiana. I mean, even into uh, into Texas. But you know, you guys might not get as much storms tonight, but you can't rule them out. You can't rule them out at all with all this much energy in the atmosphere here. And then, you know, you just got, you got tons of fuel to the atmosphere here. This builds also into Alabama, and that's why we got to watch out in the middle of the night, even into Alabama. So a lot of fuel to the atmosphere. That's a thermodynamic, right? What about the kinematics, the winds aloft? Well, if you notice, there's already a, kind of a low-level jet, 40, 30, 40 knot low-level jet in, in our areas of Arkansas, Mississippi. Okay, this really increases to about, I mean, a 50 to almost 60 knot low-level jet, 06Z, think of that as right in the middle of the night tonight, right around midnight to around 1 a.m. So you have a, a pretty stout, almost, almost spring-like low-level jet over here because of this upper-level low up here, cut-off low. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase the damaging wind threat and increase the tornado threat. The 850 millibars is about a mile up in the atmosphere here in general. Okay, so winds a mile up in the atmosphere is going, is pushing, you know, upper end tropical storm force winds. Okay, in the upper levels of the atmosphere here, um, th there's a spin to the atmosphere. So th there's definitely going to be, and, and this is highly contaminated. When you see these crazy red lines, highly contaminated. So it's not even worth looking at. But um, really, what I want to show you here is the changing of wind, uh, wind direction with height. But there's a tornado icon, a little bit of a looping photograph, low level looping photograph. But uh, in general, the atmosphere here is prime for a decent tornado threat for sure. So please be careful tonight. The updraft felicity swath shows it well. Right in the middle of that 5% risk area, you got some highlighted areas and some of these storms that are showing rotation embedded in this line of storms. You could have an embedded supercell in this line of storms tonight. Take this serious. Even into Alabama, even into southern into southwest and western sections of Tennessee. Take this serious tonight, guys. I'm telling you. This is something that's, I feel like, kind of flying under the radar, um, but it shouldn't be. So uh, please, please, please be safe tonight in Mississippi and have a way to get alerts. Tomorrow, there's a slight risk of severe storms again. It just it, Southern Alabama, just rinse and repeat for you guys. Um, it, it's pretty wild, um, but here we are. So marginal risk extends all the way up into the Piedmont of North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, but you got a slight risk all the way up into the low country of South Carolina, in Western South Carolina, the entire southern half of Georgia, a level two out of five risk, slight risk, and the entire northern half of Florida, same deal. Southern, extreme southern sections of Alabama, watch out, even southern sections of Mississippi. Tornado threat right now is at a 2% chance, okay? But I can tell you there's probably going to be a 5% risk issued somewhere here in Georgia, I would bet, okay? Um, I love I love seeing if this actually happens. It's not because oh yeah, look at me. I, I can guess it. That's not it. But it it honestly, when I try, when I think in my head, hey, I think there's going to be a five percent risk, and I hope it doesn't. I hope it does not increase. It, it tells me that I'm looking at things right, um, and I'm always learning, guys. But a two percent risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given location in the green down here. But I would watch for a five percent risk to get issued. Wind and hail. Hail, not as big of a deal tomorrow. Only a 5% risk, but this could increase. Wind, throw, wind though, 15% risk down here. No hatch risk of anything, but a 15% risk of winds um, exceeding 50 knots or higher. It's 55 to 60 miles per hour. 
within 25 miles in a given location. And this is because of this cutoff low. And we'll start off Monday. Here it is drifting at its lost. It's fully cut off from the main flow. It's literally drifting in Kentucky. You guys could have some showers and storms tomorrow. Uh, but these are the storms down here that you'll watch out for in southern Alabama, southern half of Georgia. These could have some kinematics to work with to support a tornado threat. But we'll watch for sweeping lines of storms to move through southern half of the southern half of Georgia, uh, northern areas of uh, Florida. The storms will be have more of a severe chance with them. But you could still have storms as far south as Miami tomorrow. But I think you're going to have day one of a very stormy day in the Carolinas, Georgia, all the way up into southern and southwest sections of Virginia into tomorrow. Storms will be there in the valley of eastern Tennessee, the Cumberland Plateau, uh, the mountains. Uh, very, very stormy. Day one. And like I say, it's day one. This is just day one of a very stormy setup over the ne next few days. But I would watch for damaging winds down here with a big time line of storms that could sweep across southern Georgia. Embedded tornado threat with this. This will get fired up probably sometime after lunchtime. Sweep through southeast Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, all of the southern half of Georgia uh, throughout the afternoon hours. But you can't roll out storms also up in Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, Augusta, uh, South Carolina. Definitely an on and off heavy shower, stormy day for you folks. The move, move past Monday, here's our low pressure, right? And we're just showing the GFS as a global model. You're just going to see blobs of green. But focus your eyes on this. This is MON, stands for Monday. I'm going to roll through the entire week all the way to the weekend. And notice you just have blobs of yellow and green pop up in this area continuously. Okay? Uh, Tuesday morning. All right? Mon uh, this is Wednesday. Rain everywhere. This is Thursday, rain everywhere. This is Friday, okay? Rain on a lot of area. Then the GFS is adamant that you're going to have some kind of tropical system um, roll up and, and, and maybe scrape the western coast of Florida. But don't, don't focus on this because this is, uh, as of now, a phantom storm, meaning it's not probably not going to happen. And you get into Saturday, rain again. You get into Sunday, rain. So... If you're vacationing, I'm sorry. It, I, I just don't think it's going to be the best week. I'm not here to give you bad news. But the good news is you're, it's not It's not like it's going to rain on your entire trip. Uh, you're going to have breaks. It's still summer. I just think you're going to have a lot of clouds even when it's not raining. So you look at rain, and this is, this is the eyesore for folks who do not want rain. You look at rain between now and literally this time next week, the next seven days. Um... I think flooding is going to become an issue in the Western Carolinas, um, you know, with some upslope flow, with some of these storms that might sweep in like this and kind of hit, come move in from the southeast and hit the western section of the state and, you know, hits the elevation, enhances moisture. Some areas could get over a half a foot of rain. Okay, that's a lot of rain, six to eight inches of rain in the western Carolinas. Columbia going for over five inches in the next seven days. Same thing with Charlotte, Augusta, Atlanta, three to four inches of rain. A lot of rain is going to fall across the southeast. Um, so, hate to be the bearer of bad news for fit folks that, you know, we're really enjoying this weekend. It's, it's about 92 degrees here in Columbia, South Carolina right now. It's very hot. feels very summer-like out there. You can hear the kids out there playing. And their pools on both both sides of me have a pool. Um, are blessed enough to be able to use it. But um, just go out there and enjoy this evening if you're a big hot weather fan. Because rain, shower activity dominates the rest of the week. Into tomorrow, there's already a slight risk for excessive rainfall. Um, 15% risk. So, I mean, you basically have a 15% risk. Uh, flash flood guidance being met in this area. So this is day day one pretty much of a lot of rain. You'll go all the way to day three. And here it is again, a slight risk already for Tuesday up for excessive rainfall. And then, you know, we won't go any further than that because things could change, but it's already symbolizing for Tuesday. Heavy rain could cause flash flooding issues in this region. But if you look at temperatures because of this cutoff low, all this rain, things like that, um, we'll start off tomorrow. This is an exact high temperatures because it goes in six hour intervals. So it really just does. And there's my cat jumping up on here. This is, this is Kylo guys. Um, this is my black cat. So 
and and he really wants some love right now. So I'm just going to hold him and, and keep rolling here. So um, it's going to be pretty cool this week. All right. This is around high temperatures for tomorrow. Uh, this is give or take. Very hot again for you folks in Louisiana. Very hot in eastern Texas. But look at this weird looking lower temperature area um, for this entire region right here up the Kentucky, southern sections of Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, uh, into the Carolinas. You've got much cooler temperatures. And this is because of clouds, rain, things like that. Now I'm going to keep rolling and you'll continue to see this. Right? Just a weird area of very low temperatures right in here. And this is because of this cutoff low. You go into you go into Wednesday, cooler temperatures. Now you're starting to even get some cooler temperatures all the way down to Mississippi, Alabama. Only in the 50s for highs in West Virginia, western areas of Virginia. Very cool. I mean, I'll be interested to see if this verifies for West Virginia. You guys will be certainly. That's chilly for June 21st. That's technically the first day of summer. So pretty wild. Um, you get into Thursday, cooler temperatures, right? It starts to warm up a little bit more in the eastern Carolinas. But uh, I really think it'll take all the way into the weekend before maybe you start to warm up a little more. So a lot of people are probably wondering, Mitch, is this kind of one of those cool downs where it's your, your low temperatures are going to be in the 40s and 50s and high temperatures in the 70s? No, it's not like a crisp fall air mass, guys. It's still very humid. It's kind of one of those things where temperatures, low temperatures might get down to the 60s. High temperatures only in the 70s, 60s. So the temperatures don't move much from the morning to the afternoon hours. That's kind of that's kind of what it is. It's it's kind of just a rain cooled air mass, if you will. And uh, got a bird outside the window, absolutely going crazy, and my cat just uh, purring like crazy. Now, sorry for the distraction. You know, guys, we just keep it rolling on this. We don't try to, um, uh, you know, <laughs> you know how it is around here. Um, the National Hurricane Center update. So this is as of 2 p.m. pretty much. This thing now has a 90% chance to develop into a tropical depression within the next 48 hours. So it's likely going to at minimum become a de tropical depression. What I want you guys to notice is this is this is the system, not this one. This is the system that's expected to develop, and it's actually looking a lot better this afternoon. What's interesting to me is the tropical wave behind it has a chance now. It's starting to get a little bit of noise. And check it out. Check out that spin over Missouri. That is our cutoff low right here, folks. If you want to know what's going to affect the weather a lot over the next uh, five to seven days across the southeast, it's this spin right here. But anyways, back to this. But this wave actually has a chance to develop also. So it's pretty interesting. But you look at the latest European, it shows that area right here too. But you look right here, we'll start off for Monday morning. And we'll take it all the way through pretty much the life cycle of this. I can tell you the latest European now doesn't want this, this first one to develop much. Um, but, you know, this is just model guidance. We actually have to look at this thing and see what happens. But we go all the way to Wednesday morning. This is getting closer to the Lesser Antilles. You're thinking, okay, is this thing going to strengthen right before it gets to the Lesser Antilles? Well, it really never does. In fact, we take it all the way to Thursday afternoon of this week. It weakens this thing into just a blob of showers and storms and gusty winds. But look at the one right behind it. It's trying, but it never really makes it either. So I'll be honest. Um, you know, the latest European does not really develop. But what I'm telling you, what I want to reiterate, guys, is there's what we call a favorable MJ, MJO phase right now. We have it. We have a phase basically where there's a lot of rising air over the tropical Atlantic. So if there's going to be a time frame where we're going to get some early season tropical waves, it's going to be Kyla, baby boy, you got to relax. I am right here. Okay. Come here. Come here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. He just wants, he just wants some cuddles. Um, so if there's, so if there's gonna, this is probably one of the funnier videos I ever made. So if there's gonna be a time frame, well, we're gonna get some early season tropical waves. It's right now because we have a lot of rising air and there's not a lot of sinking air right now. So <laughs> we're working our way through it. So, uh, this is the latest European ensemble from 06Z. So technically not the latest. The latest one is still running. What I want to show you here is there's, numerous members that make up an ensemble with the European. I believe there's 51. And you can see them right in here. These are a bunch of numbers. You can't see them very well because they're all clustered up together. So this is our signal for what could be Brett. 
But if you notice, there's a signal immediately behind it with this wave right here. So it's interesting. Is this wave going to try to form? Well, obviously, the model is latching on to this one the most, but I will be interested over the next 24 hours if this begins to increase in some support here. But uh, obviously, you know, we're getting into Wednesday, and this one has the most support. The strongest members, meaning the the strongest scenarios that have the strongest storms, a lot want to turn north. So the stronger the storm early within the next 48 to 72 hours has a higher chance to head on out to sea. The weaker this storm stays, the higher chance it heads into the um, into the Eastern Caribbean. And uh, you know, definitely, you know, you could get a period later this week in the Lesser Antilles of some showers, some gusty winds things like that so it'll be interesting to see what happens regardless i don't can think this is going to be a huge threat for anybody uh, you guys can handle a tropical wave in the lesser antilles areas like puerto rico i know you guys can handle it um, but it is very unusual for this time of the year you look at the latest plot guidance here from tropical tidbits you know weaker members probably will go further south into the lesser antilles any kind of stronger members are going to go further north so We'll get more detailed in this if something significant changes, but we're going to continue to keep you guys updated on this. Uh, this is just an, really an interesting topic. I think it's going to be something that isn't highly going to, <laughs> going to impact much people, but uh, it is certainly something that needs to be watched, especially for our neighbors out in the Caribbean. That's all I got, guys. Sorry about the distractions. A lot of people want to see said they want to see the cat anyways. And uh, listen, when this cat right here, same thing with Stormy. When this cat wants its cuddles, now now Kylo, Kylo is going to take, going to take its cuddles. So that's all I got, guys. God bless all y'all. Have a great evening. Happy Father's Day again, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning.